him. I want to watch the, the news. Are you making are you making headway at least? This is the news. Michael McGob, it's time for the only news that matters. And Kerry King explained why Tom Araya reportedly hasn't been playing bass on Slayer albums since the 90s, suggesting that Araya's issues wasn't lack of skill, but rather not preparing for recording sessions. Even though From Hell I Rise seems to have been born out of the frustration caused by what he perceived as Slayer's premature retirement, decided to fly solo. His solo album's called From Hell I Rise. Alongside a stellar cast of supporting musicians, which includes Slayer's former drummer, Paul Bostoff, Death Angel's vocalist, Mark Azaguida, and Hell Yeah's bassist, Kyle Sanders, and Violence and former Machine Head guitarist Phil Demo does seem to have a positive effect on the thrash metal icon. Kerry King feels like a natural continuation of Slayer in both the music itself and the philosophy behind it. And the guitarist admits to Guitar World in a recent interview that he never would have made the decision had the other option still been on the table. However, he also admits that embarking on this new journey feels refreshing. He said, it's refreshing. I never wanted it. Uh, it's not something I needed musically. It's not something I needed personally. Having it was cool, super cool, and super fun. And working with new people was super fun. This is the first record I haven't played bass on probably since the 90s. And the last sentence, King seems to refer to a revelation he made in an interview with Rolling Stone in February this year, where his solo project was just about to take off, and where he also said that Dave Lombardo was dead to him, and that he hasn't spoken with Uriah since the band called it quits in 2019. In the same interview, King said, since the early 90s, I've done all the rhythm guitars and all the bass on Slayer Records. I've always done bass, basically, uh, my guy Tom Araya really didn't. Asked by GY's John Wielderhorn why this apparently has been the case, King said, we would always let Tom play bass until he got tired and not being good at it. In Tom's defense, up to that point, he had never played the songs. It was always just me and Paul going through them. And then we'd get to the studio, it's time to record, and I think Tom got it in his head that we'd be able to pull it off. But, but for anybody that never played a song before, to come in without knowing the music and get it up to recording level, it's not realistic. So if I've already done my guitar tracks, Jeff done his guitar tracks, and Tom doesn't know the bass parts, I can pick up the bass and get it done in less than a, than a day. Because I already know the songs. It got to where he'd mess around and play one song for eight hours before he'd get frustrated and just say, here, you do it. I don't want anybody to think for a second that he couldn't do it if he had the time to learn it. Kerry also looked back on his writing arrangements with the late, great guitar player, Jeff Hanneman. He said, in Slayer, when Jeff was still in the band, and I did second guitar tracks on the rhythms on songs he wrote, I would use Jeff's guitar. So any nuances from his rigs or the guitar would still come through, even though I was playing it. 
Uh, speaking of which, the overall vibe of King and Hanneman's songs were pretty similar, almost identical. Uh, with that in mind, uh, Kerry King was then asked whether he consciously wrote some parts of his solo album to be in the Jeff style. He said, that's overthinking things. It didn't occur to me once to write like Jeff. This is me, but I played Jeff's songs and he played my songs for so long that our styles became kind of integrated. Over the years of uh, Slayer's existence, Jeff and King weren't able to write stuff together for one simple reason. And he said, a lot of people don't realize that in the early days of Slayer, Jeff and I wrote a lot together. It was only after he moved a distance away that we each wrote our own stuff because the commute sucked and that made it harder to get together. The last song we wrote together was Disciple. All right, there you go. Um, Tom didn't play on the 90s Slayer albums. Who knew? Who cares? <laughs> it's not like Tom played any integral part in his bass playing. You know, uh, Slayer is not really known for the bass playing. Nah, I don't think, you know, Tom sucked. I mean, he did the job and you have to sing and play at the same time. That brutal music, that takes some talent, man. And uh, yeah, but you know, for him to bring it up, I don't know, man. Kerry King seems kind of bitter about Tom not wanting to do Slayer anymore. And this ain't the first thing he said about Tom after starting his solo career. He's kind of been throwing some jabs at Tom, mostly at Dave Lombardo. He's dead to me and stuff like that. And, you know, when Jeff died, not soon after Jeff died, I remember there was some story where Kerry King said, well, Jeff is worm food. And I'm like, man, this dude, man, <laughs> what the hell? But, you know, I got to say, in my personal experience with Kerry King, he was the nicest guy out of all of them. I got to meet Slayer when they did, and this was like a secret party. And I ended up getting tickets on this college radio show that had a metal show that I would win everything because I knew the answer to everything. So I won tickets to see... A private party they held with um, Rick Rubin was there. It was that punk album, Undisputed Attitude. They did like a show. They, they played a show. It was this, what's very ironic about it, it was in this billiard. And fast forward many years later, when Slayer played uh, the Fillmore here on Miami Beach, we played that same billiard after the Slayer show. It was kind of like the after show, come see Thrasher Diet. You know, this billiard we played out, which is very odd. But anyway, uh, it's a little tiny place and a little tiny stage. And uh, I was all the way up front. And I'll never forget some guy trying to get on stage. And Tom kicked him right in the head, man. It was brutal. But anyway, that night, man, all of them couldn't be bothered. You know, Jeff, um... Tom Araya and the drummer at the time was Daddy Didi. I forgot his name. It wasn't. It wasn't both off or obviously not Lombardo. So they all couldn't be bothered. Even the new drummer. But Kerry King came out, hung out with us, talked to us, signed my Rain and Blood CD. He was super cool. But you know, I mean, that's one night he he's got a bad reputation, but. I think he's a nice guy, man. Well, he was nice to me, man. So I'm not like uh, here to bash Kerry because, you know, my experience with him was awesome. But yeah, he does say things to the press that's kind of like, damn, dude, really? You got to call Jeff Hanneman worm food? I mean, that was very, it wasn't that long after Jeff died. I don't think he was even worm food yet. But anyway, thank you so much for watching The Only News That Matters. Leave your comments below what you feel about, you know, what Carrie's saying about uh, Tom and, you know, the writing situation with Jeff Hanneman and Dave Lombardo. He he's dead to him. 
uh, leave it in the comments below and um, also subscribe to my channel if you haven't please and uh, ring that little notification bell and in case you are subscribed please check to see if you're still subscribed because people are getting unsubscribed for no reason and that blows all right I hope that stops and like the video it's good for the YouTube algorithms so stay frosty listen to Black Sabbath and smack them a cob farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies farewell and adieu to you ladies of Spain for we've received orders for to sail back to Boston and so never more shall we see you again <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.